in the kind of movies that I have done in the past, I like characters of, a, you know, that kind of like walk that fine line between uh, doing the right thing and doing what needs to be done. Um, and um, so I was attracted to that. And I immediately saw um, a character that it was very similar to some of the characters played by uh, Clint Eastwood in the 70s, um, where um, in, a, in a time and a place where the system breaks down, that character was able to, um, to bring justice in ways that other people were not able to do. So I felt like I hadn't seen that character in the superhero sp space. And that to me was very exciting. Honestly, just wanted to tell his story. I mean, my main objective was just to make it a Black Adam movie and um, to offer the fans a clear understanding of why he is the way he is and what happened to him, you know? So in the movie, we are also introducing other characters um, with the Justice Society that's, um, you know, for extra superheroes, which is not very usual in a superhero movie. Usually you go just introduce one by one and then they all come together in another movie. Uh, so for me, the big challenge was to still make it a Black Adam movie while introducing other superheroes, which are amazing and they deserve this, their space and people don't know them that much. So they deserve to be introduced properly. So um, there was a lot of things going on in the script. Uh, and my main goal, you know, to this day <laughs> is to make it a Black Adam movie and that we understand uh, his journey. In Black Adam, he just has this extra layer of complexity, you know, and I think that that uh, that really comes from the fact that uh, he's been waiting for so long to play this role and there's so much expectation that he just um, uh, really prepares extra hard for the role and really thinks about what he's gonna do. Um, Black Adam is a character that doesn't really speak much, doesn't really, he's a bit distant, he's a little bit, um, he doesn't interact, um, you know, he's always kind of floating, he comes in fast, leaps fast, um, that's not something that he's been doing in other movies. In other movies, you know, he's, you know, he's been a lot more charming, a lot more, you know, uh, you know, with, um, you know, a lot more dialogue intensive. So in this one, I, I think that, and I think that he was very comfortable doing that and playing that side of him uh, as well. That's one of the interesting parts of, of, of our movie as it, as it kind of thematically talks about um, what what makes a hero, or or, or who um, who has the right to to define what justice is, and and I think that I wouldn't call Black Adam's moral code questionable. I would just say that his moral code is just not maybe up to date with the times that we live in, right? So I mean, this is a guy. That, that was born 5,000 years ago, where things were very different. So uh, he is a no-nonsense kind of a guy that just um, uh, does things his way for what he believes is right. And when he meets somebody like Hawkman, who has a very strict and, and very defined justice and moral code, they are kind of at odds with each other. But um, they're both, you know, two sides of the same coin. And through the movie, in that uh, argument, you know, the audience is put in the position to understand both sides, and we never tell them like who's right or who's wrong. Um, um, I think that in in a complex world that we live in, you need both. We have uh, Hawkman, um, Doctor Fate, Cyclone, and Atom Smasher. Hawkman and Doctor Fate are two of the oldest members of the JSA. Um, founding members, per se. And uh, Cyclone and Atom Smasher, they're newer members, uh, and they're almost like, in our movie, they're almost like new recruits. 
So it's the first time that they go out on a mission. And so um, in the team, you have that dynamic of the senior versus the new recruits, and they have to learn to work together.